Hello everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a simple Elastic Beanstalk application using PHP. Uh, to do that, uh, once you have logged into AWS console, go to Elastic Beanstalk Services. To do that, you can click on Services and you should be able to find Elastic Beanstalk right under Compute or you can filter it in the search bar. So just type Elastic Beanstalk and you can navigate to the service. Now you can see that this is the welcome page. I do not have any applications or environments configured. So uh, you can do a quick start of your application, sample application you by selecting a platform for, uh, from this drop down. But I'm going to run you through step by step process of how to do that. So let us go ahead and create a new application from scratch. So now once you do that, uh, you'll get a certain steps to create your application and an environment in it. So let's go ahead and create this. So we'll say uh, something like OSFG web server. Uh, so OSFG is open source for geeks, uh, which is my blog. So let's name it OSFG web server and let's just copy the same thing to the description. We'll do next. So now at this point your application is created. Now you need to create a new environment inside this application. So you can either choose a web server environment, uh, which is uh, your basically an HTTP or HTTPS web server, right? That you host on cloud. Whereas a work environment is more of a, a component that is that can be used to decouple uh, your actual web server. So let's say uh, you have some asynchronous tasks. So your web server uh, receives requests from the client and puts. Uh, the items into an SQSQ, then your worker worker environments can pick those up and process it asynchronously. So that is what worker environment is. But for this demo, we are going to select a web server environment. So let me go ahead and click create web server. Now inside that, you need to choose what kind of uh, environment do you want uh, this Elastic uh, Beanstalk to host. So as we saw before, these are the type of uh, applications you can host so for simplicity sake I'm going to choose PHP because that's the simplest to demo and environment type is uh, another interesting thing to note so you can either say it's a single instance uh, which will just spin up a new EC2 instance or you can see it uh, like uh, your environment is uh, behind a load balancing and auto scaling system. So this means that you will have a load balancer in front and you will have multiple EC2 instances based on your auto scaling policies. And whenever a client requests for your uh, web server resources, your lo load balancer will kind of redirect the request to one of the EC2 servers uh, that are running behind the auto scaling group. So let's keep, keep that and let's click on next. Now, once you do that, you need you can either deploy your own application or you can let sample application run. So we will deploy our own code in some time, but to start with, let's use the sample application. Uh, next option is to choose your deployment preferences. This is when uh, specifically when uh, you have your, your application is behind an auto scaling group. So your code is basically deployed to two or three EC2 instances, uh, depending how you have configure the auto scaling group so you can choose how do you want your new code to be deployed so it can either be rolling or you know basically deploy everything to all the EC2 instances as once so uh, I'll keep it rolling for now and what I'm gonna do is instead of percentage I'm gonna say fixed so let's say you have three EC2 instances uh, your uh, deployment will just pick one EC2 instance at a single time deploy your new code there and so on and so forth right and a load balancer will figure out that uh, some EC2 instance has gone down it will redirect the queries uh, to the other EC2 instances that is yet to be picked up for deployment so let's keep this uh, settings uh, like this and click on next uh, now next you need to choose uh, to create an environment so once you create an application you can create an environment it so environment is basically something like a dev environment a QA environment and a production environment so let's just name this dev for now which is dev environment and this is the URL uh, environment URL that gets uh, generated so you can click on check availability and it looks like it is available so we'll stick with this and let's keep description as empty and click on next uh, now you can configure additional resources here one is you can configure a relational database and uh, you can also choose to put your EC2 instance inside your own custom VPC uh, but one important thing to note here is that if you create an RDS instance from here then when you delete 
your environment or your application this RDS uh, database will get deleted as well so to avoid this what general practice uh, is that you create a RDS instance separately and then once you do that you can link it uh, later with your Elast elastic beanstalk application so uh, i'm just gonna keep these as uh, default i'm not i'm not gonna change this and click on next uh, now uh, you can choose what type of ec2 instance do you want to spin up to deploy your code uh, this is a free tier account so i'm gonna stick to t2.micro but if you have kind of production needs then you should probably go with uh, type of instances that are uh, down uh, at the bottom of this drop down so I'll stick with t2.micro uh, EC2 key pair uh, so if you want to SSH into your uh, EC2 instances make sure you select your EC2 pair uh, I'll just choose my web server key which I have uh, you can ha give email addresses uh, if you want to re receive notifications of your deployments uh, and other noti in general notifications from Elastic Beanstalk uh, these are not mandatory so I'm just gonna skip it uh, again you have health check URLs so your elastic load balancer uh, checks the, this URL to see whether your EC2 instances are down or not so uh, we are going to keep this uh, as blank as well for now but it is highly recommended that you add something like slash health.htm or slash uh, you know test.htm and make your web server uh, render some page some response to that particular URL and that way ELB knows that your EC2 is healthy uh, rolling updates type uh, rolling based on health uh, which is fine uh, so next is cross load cross zone load balancing so the way uh, load balancing works is that first of all uh, load balancing only works in a particular region so it, it does work cross AZ which is availability zones but it is still inside a single region so let's say you have deployed your uh, elastic beanstalk environment in two AZs in a single region let's say AZ1 AZ2 and let's say AZ1 has four EC2 instances and AZ2 has two EC2 instances then all the requests that come to load balancer will be equally distributed to AZ1 and AZ2 which means that the number of requests received by four EC2 instances in AZ1 are same as the uh, request received by two EC2 instances in AZ2 right which is clearly not uh, optimizing the load balancing however if you want to equally distribute load across all the six EC2 instances across the AZs then you need to choose this option which is cross zone load balancing and in that case ELB will equally distribute uh, the load to four and two uh, EC2 instances in each AZ uh, next option is connection draining so connection draining uh, so generally how uh, ELB works is that when ELB uh, notices that uh, your EC2 health is bad it will replace it with another uh, EC2 instance if you have it behind auto scaling group but it, it basically identifies whether your EC2 is healthy and uh, it can serve your request so if you um, mention connection draining then what it will do is even though it figures out that uh, you know the you uh, the EC2 instance is not healthy it will keep the connection alive uh, so that the requests that are already gone to that EC2 instances get a chance to get completed however the new uh, requests do not go to that EC2 instance so that is what connection training is and the requests that are already made to EC2 instance uh, will get a timeout of whatever you configure here which is 20 seconds to complete however if this timeout occurs then ELB will which is load balancer will, will forcefully terminate the connection so I'm gonna keep these as default as well but I hope you understood what these settings are these are kind of very important uh, other than that I'm gonna keep other things as default uh, you can choose the type of root volume uh, if you want a higher throughput uh, I would suggest go for provision IOPS uh, if not then you can go for general purpose SSD uh, magnetic is HSD so uh, I would suggest not to go for this uh, you could either go, go for general purpose SSD or provision IOPS so I'm just gonna keep it as default and click on next so here you can add tags uh, I just uh, prefer adding ad admin uh, ATACOR and maybe environment as dev and let's click on next 
so this is a service role and instance profile so if you if you have created specifically a service role then you can add it here I'm just gonna keep it as default uh, this is basically the elastic beanstalk uh, service uh, that has created this uh, profile and roles for us so let's keep that as default and click next now once you do that uh, you would get a summary of what uh, settings you have selected uh, just go ahead and create launch now once you do that uh, you would see that your elastic beanstalk is environment is getting launched so what it will do is it will create an elastic load balancer it will create an auto scaling group and uh, your elastic load balancer will kind of point to your uh, uh, auto scale uh, ec2 instances behind the auto scaling group so you can go to configuration here and you can see what what are the uh, settings that you have applied so you can see it is load balancing uh, number of instances are one two four uh, you can actually go ahead and edit this uh, you won't be able to edit it now since uh, the environment configuration is in progress but you can go ahead and edit it later so it says minimum instance count is one maximum instance count is four and uh, your ec2 instances will be hosted in any of this availability zones or you can choose uh, one of these right and scaling triggers uh, you have network out uh, you can generally go with CPU utilization so if CPU utilization is about a particular percentage of threshold you can choose that but let us not uh, change anything at this point of time so uh, uh, since this is uh, getting started I'll show you uh, the EC2 instance as well uh, there should be an EC2 instance that should be uh, getting run right now uh, there we go I see one instance already running so you can see that uh, the name is OS FG web server dev so this is the EC2 instance started by our elastic beanstalk uh, it is still initializing and deploying our code so that is the EC2 let's quickly check at uh, ELB as well uh, which is oh sorry it is a part of EC2 itself so you should be able to see it here there we go load balancers and uh, we should be able to see a load balancer here there we go you can see uh, a load balancer is created in a default VPC and let's see some of the uh, configurations here so this is the ELB uh, it is in default VPC and you can see it is uh, serving one of one instance in service so because our auto scaling had minimum of one EC2 instance we just have one uh, EC2 instance and your ELB is redirecting uh, all the requests to that EC2 instance so you can click on instances and see uh, that this is the instance that we just saw before in the EC2 so if you have let's say two minimum instances uh, in the auto scaling group then you would probably have two here and your auto your elastic load balancer will, will basically redirect traffic to both of the ec2 instances but for now since we just have one ec2 instance uh, this is just one so you can uh, have a health check and uh, all other configurations here uh, like for example currently elb is configured to have just http traffic but you can configure it to add https traffic as well uh, provided you have uh, correct SSL certificates so if you have uh, your own DNS uh, configured from route 53 uh, you can generate your own SSL certificate for your domain and add an S HTTPS uh, listener here so all those stuff you can do so let's go back to our elastic beanstalk and as you can see this is the application and our uh, en dev environment is up and running so let's go, go and click inside it and you can see this is the URL that uh, it uh, is pointing to so if you click and open a new tab you can see a default PHP configuration is up and running right which means you have successfully deployed your uh, elastic beanstalk uh, PHP application on AWS so I would end this video here but in the next video I'm going to show you how to deploy our own code to this and how to see uh, that up and running. So thank you. Stay tuned.